that's actually that's a good question. Uh, for I think engaging employees is on a different levels. The first one that comes to thought is keeping them up to date on skills training and we deliver many types of trainings to keep them updated not only on our platform but also on the market on the competition on the clients on the trends so that would say one thing and the second thing is trying to be very human in contact with recurrent webinars or reach out this is how we try to make it happen time is always the biggest one that, that everyone says so we're trying to find ways to say Here's where to overcome that, bite size in this form. Laptop, tablet, at your desk, on the move, that type of thing. I guess probably making it relevant. Uh, I think probably le uh, learning material by its very nature tends to be generic. Um, so, uh, y you know, we, we, the, the world has become very niche. Uh, everything that, every one of these stands here is probably quite specialist in the things that they do. So how relevant is the content that is on the market? So. Uh, making things relevant, probably. More sell. So we're trying to persuade them of the benefits of, of learning and the use of technology to kind of overcome traditional problems that we've had in accessing learning. Yeah, everyone will say the biggest challenge at the moment is, uh, I suppose, like getting a piece of uh, airtime with someone or capturing their focus, their concentration. There's always something that people say, oh, we've got to fight for uh, people's focus and attention. But at the end of the day, if something is of interest, of value, and engages the person, so you, you've got to have that marketing spin. You can't be pure just L&D and, and think everyone's intrinsically motivated. You've got to have almost these days a bit of a hook, you know, clickbait, something along those lines. So someone comes in, once they're in, how do you make them stay? And that's where you've got to be ruthless and the content that you give them needs to be spot on. Uh, make it relevant, make it interesting, make it stimulating. Um, let them have a bit of fun, don't make it too serious, and make it, the relevancy bit is really important because if they can see change coming through their learning, then it's gotta be a good thing. You have access to many content, you can subscribe to workshop, you can even request a coach, but it's not enough. What do you need? What is emotional intelligence for you first? Uh, what are you looking for? What is the change you're looking? And we ask questions and we do like um, some small interview and from that, the same that uh, Amazon is doing with their user, making sure that we adapt the content to the, um, to, to the, the needs. If you want to learn, I need to make sure that you have the space and the material to learn. Uh, using in-house experts, so we're yeah, using SMEs from, from within the business, um, using them to support the training team, support the, the learning team with how they go about exp uh, spreading that knowledge, spreading that expertise. Uh, you finding that's having a spillover effect in terms of how engaged people are from learners to the SMEs and you're sharing that? Uh, it's definitely based in the profile of the SMEs um, and people are becoming more engaged because they can relate it to what they do. Um, so it's not hypothetical anymore. It's, it's all relatable back to what they're doing in their day-to-day -day job. Not everyone is interested in all the fluff, all the history. You know, give that, just clearly signpost it. Additional resources, other curated content. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, so let's just kind of give a journey that says you can find some great bits here, there, there. However, they're all optional. This piece of learning has the essentials. So come in, get what you need, and then get on with the task at hand. Um, and again, I suppose the analogy that I use is someone doesn't need to understand how an engine works to be able to drive a car. Let's get them in, let's get them driving the cars, get them doing what they need to do. If they want to learn all the other stuff, best of luck to them, here's where you find it. However, that's not essential to do what you need to do. The biggest is on the top um, to grab their attention. And this is our, our first and our yeah, top priority topics to create uh, micro learning formats to notch people in their daily businesses, uh, with their daily targets, and to yeah, to notch them, to be motivated, to yeah, get deeper in the learning. So we've got to make it interactive and fun that people want to do it, but happy to do it on their own devices as well. So it's going to be a challenge, but we're up for it. I specifically work in in the hospitality industry, and I think it's full of lots of people learning on the job and doing lots of skills-based learning. So in terms of them 
engaging in more of the digital side of things. I think we have a real challenge on our hands. And so we are seeing it more and more as people have a little bit more of a better work-life balance. They are engaging in some of those tools. So I think it's on the increase, but it's not quite as prevalent as in some other industries, I would say. You know, somebody who is looking to make a jump, reskill, change their, their abilities and their skills, they don't want a huge piece of learning. They want little bite-sized pieces. Um, they want, you know, feedback. Um, and they want to know that they're achieving. But at some point, they're going to take stock and decide whether it's something they want to continue or not. Are they, going to, are they even going to undertake it if it's a two, three, four hour, five day learning experience? Maybe not in those situations. The engaging of, of the learners is possible when you deliver useful content that fit their needs, that they believe they can have a meaningful impact from the learning. If they don't perceive that the learning will change their professional uh, performances, they probably will not be motivated, they will not be engaged. If they perceive that there is a lot of, uh, the, the cost-benefit ratio is too high, maybe because the, the cost is also the experience, maybe the, the platform is difficult to use, maybe the, the content is difficult to understand, they will not engage on, on, uh, um, on learning, they, they will drop out from the, from, from the curve, they, they will not come back to the platforms. I would say very often the leaders and managers of the employees, because the employees normally like to learn, especially the younger people, you know, older ones very often, I mean, it's not that black and white, but older ones very often, you when you talk about training or coaching, they have more thought like, oh, that's a bad thing, I have a problem, I need a coaching. But you know, younger people, they really want to learn. But very often, especially when we talk about e-trainings or things like that, it's, it's about the leaders. You know, I had one, one um, guy, he, it was a blended learning, he came to the training to me and he was laughing and said, you know what, my manager, uh, sorry to say I ripped my ass off, uh, I said, oh, God, what happened? Yeah, I took a look at one of our UE trainings during the working time and he was like shouting at me, why do you take a look at YouTube during the, during the work day? You can't do that. Don't look videos. Says, I'm learning. Oh, 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 sorry to say, okay, then. So I think the, the managers should, should work on it. Okay, well a massive challenge at the moment is how do we get people together because people are increasingly working remotely or they're working with hybrid patterns or companies are global so they've got sites all over the world and it's how do you get people together to engage in learning activities. It's one thing to get together and have a meeting and a business meeting and have transactional conversations but to be engaged in group-based learning a lot more difficult. The biggest challenge is time because uh, we're busier than ever and our teams are busier than ever um, and therefore encouraging them and engaging them enough to want to free up their time to develop themselves uh, is probably the biggest challenge um, but engaging them is about allowing them to see the value that L&D can add um, so doing regular um, testimonials, regular feedback um, all of that is showing them the value add of taking out two hours from their day, taking out half an hour from their day, uh, 10 minutes from their day. We, if we can show them the value add from that, then that's, that's what we're bringing back.